everyone. I am just about a minute late, so that's not too bad considering. Hello, hello. I feel like I need to introduce myself to all of you, even if you've been following me for three years. Um, it's been almost a month since I've been on here live with you. Um, have had pneumonia for three weeks. I'm still trying to get over it, but I have my cough drop. I have my Kleenexes. I have something to drink, so hopefully we can get through this. So um, if you're just hopping on, tell me hello. Let me get my um, iPad set up here so that I can see your comments. It is so good to be back with you. I feel like I need to learn how to paint all over again. You know, a month, it doesn't sound like very long, but if you haven't painted in that long, it's like, ooh, <laughs> especially live. Okay, let me see if I can get you pulled up on here so I can see your comments. Okay. So let me know. Hey, Crystal. Yay. Okay, so I can see the comments, but thank you guys for all of your comments, your prayers, your checking on me. Uh, the craft show went great in November. That was on the last Saturday, well, the 13th uh, of November, which was on a Saturday. The 14th, which was on a Sunday. Went to church Sunday morning. Fine. Of course, tired, you know, from having a big uh, craft show. It was very successful. By Sunday night, it was all I could do to move off of the couch. Sore throat started. All this stuff started. Long story short, it went into pneumonia. And even right now, just to dry my hair takes every ounce of energy I have. So I am pushing through. You saw I posted. I got my tree up. I got a few decorations up. But for me, that is not what I normally do. Normally, my outside is covered in lights everything comes down that's on the walls and everything christmas just explodes on my walls that just ain't happening this year <laughs> but we're good that's okay we are still celebrating and i do have enough up that it feels like christmas downstairs so this is what we're going to paint tonight <clears throat> i'm going to do it just a little bit different i know that white's kind of hard to see in that light on his beard there you can see the little streaks but this is just an old just an old board. I think it may have been off of a fence, uh, an old fence. I'm not sure. This is wire uh, that's in this one. I just drilled the holes. I don't know when I did this one. A long time ago. I was going to do a practice one today um, before I came on here live. And I fell asleep on the couch and took a very nice nap. So, haven't practiced it today. So, we're just going to do it as it goes. So, for those of you that... Um, have not been on here before. My name is Pam Savage, and I am owner of Young at Heart Creations. I do paint parties. I do. I now do craft sales in your home. We do what we call a little pop-up craft sale, uh, come and go, or like the old Tupperware parties and Pampered Chef and, and things like that. I don't like to compare this to those things because um, it's nothing like those, but as far as the party, it's going to be something like that. I have my first one booked in two weeks. It's going to be a come and go. Just going to set things up in their, I think, dining room, uh, just here and there and have some snacks and just have some fun and just come and go. And if they need gifts, um, you know, for Christmas or Christmas decorations, uh, it's just going to be so much fun. I think we're going to do it from 10 to 2. And we've already got several that are coming. So if you're interested in that, let me know. Uh, if you're the hostess, you will have many, many ways to earn points to get free stuff. So that's something new that I'm trying. Got a lot of things in the works that I'm trying. Uh, new that I haven't done this past year. So hi, Tammy. Hi, Jerry. And let's see, who else? Okay, I've got a Tammy Row and Tammy Staples. Okay. Great. So y'all do remember me. You are on here. Thank you so, so much for being patient and waiting for me to get over this stuff. And I understand I'm not the only one that's had it. I think about half the people in our county have, but I usually do that every year. Not get pneumonia, but I get, you know, just the weather change stuff. But this time it went into pneumonia. And if you'll remember this time last year, uh, the end of the month, I had COVID, and that went into pneumonia. So they say once you've had pneumonia, you're susceptible to it. So, But I am up and about, still just have to 
every about 15 minutes or so, take a breath. Going up my stairs is like, okay, I know how many steps there are now. I have 13 steps up my stairs. I've counted them. I can get up about four. I have to stop. Four more stops. So anyway, I'm not sure if it's old age or the pneumonia or maybe just a combination of both. But uh, I am better and I am ready to paint with you tonight. I'm just going to show you just a couple of things. I did post pictures of these. I had shown you before. Just They were just sconces candle sconces. There's a hole in this right here where the candles went. I've had these for so long. They were just the brown oak. Um, oh, about, about the color of the board that we're going to paint on tonight. This is the color they were. Uh, very pretty, and I've used them for uh, candles forever in my home, and I would change out the candles for Christmas or, or whatever, but I decided to refurbish them. Uh, I'm going to put them in the sale that I'm going to have in a couple of weeks, but um, I just, I glued the little snowmen on there, painted them white, um, distressed them with sandpaper, just distressed the edges, and then put wood uh, snowflakes with diamond dust. I know that diamond dust is hard to see right now, but um, anyway, just in pine branches and berries, and I just think they're so festive now. So you could put them together as a group, or just one uh, with another arrangement, but I had fun doing this. I wasn't sure how they were going to turn out, and I just was not able to come on live, but I did have to do some painting. Um, but I, I did not have a voice at all, and when I finally did, I couldn't quit coughing long enough to do a live. Um, but I'm here tonight, so let's get started, and I'll show you the latest napkin uh, Mod Podge that I've done. I am in love, in love with it. Hi, Dana. I, I kept one for myself, and I think I've got five or six of them done. They're going to go in the sale as well. Um, so, isn't it so cute? Oh, I, I just love everything about it. The expression on their faces, the colors are just beautiful. I think I got the napkins off of Etsy. I think that's where I got them. But I just love the colors in them. Just love, love, love it. All right, let me get that out of our way. <clears throat> so I will post pictures tomorrow of some of the decorations I've put up and you'll see how I used uh, those shelf sitters. Now what we're doing tonight, the, the Santa tonight, is um, we're going to reverse the colors and I'm going to use more of a red. This is more of a country, um, almost a burgundy, but it's a dark, dark red. I do not remember the color. And this is a dark, it looks like pine green maybe, but we're going to reverse it. Do a uh, green background and red Santa suit. But I've also done these for, I think, uh, spring, fall. Here's one that's just a little bit smaller. Same uh, depth, a uh, one inch. And then, uh, just but just a smaller one. And this one has the pumpkin that says, Happy Fall, y'all. So, yeah, just scraps. But they make the cutest little fillers. Uh, and shelf sitters, tear tray, just nice little office gifts. You know, things things of, like that that you don't want to spend a ton, but you want to get something nice. So that's just kind of a suggestion for you. I do, I know it's not New Year's yet, before we get started. It's not New Year's yet. Um, and I don't typically do New Year's resolutions because I end up not doing the resolutions when I, when I call it that. Hi, Heather. Hi, Peggy. Um, what I normally do now is I set a few goals. I try not to set so many goals that I can't reach them or a go goal that is so difficult that I know I'm not going to reach. Um, I try to do them that I can reach, can finish, um, you know, and, and if I don't finish it, if I at least start it and get almost to the end, that's better than what I was doing, whatever it is. Hi, Karen. Um, so what I'm, challenging you to do as well. This is my Bible case. My Bible's in here. And um, I have read my Bible through completely from start to finish one time. Now, I do a lot of studying in between that, but um, reading it through one time, I did that one time. And I am not a reader. So it is a challenge for me to sit down and read. Now, I can look at pictures and of painting, you know, and, and things like that for hours. But as far as just reading, I'm just not a reader. But I'm challenging myself and I'm challenging you um, for this next year, start January the 1st. There's 27 books in the New Testament. 
So I'm going to read the New Testament through again uh, this next year. So 27 books. If you read two books, uh, two full books a month, you will finish. A little over two books. But if you read two books uh, a month, you will reach that goal. So I'm going to do it. Let's keep <laughs> kind of hold each other accountable. Uh, and let's read it and see what God's Word has for us. Um, you know, you could read it a thousand times through. And every time you read it, you're going to find something you missed the, the previous time. So I'm going to do it. I'm not going to say I'm going to try. I'm going to say I'm going to do it. So... Keep me accountable. I'm going to start January the 1st with that challenge. So, um, and it, we, you can do the Old Testament the same way, but I'm going to start with the New Testament this time and uh, try to get through it, and then I can go back through the Old Testament. But New Testament, uh, I love, love, love reading it, and that's what we're under is the New Testament. So, anyway, I just thought it would be a good challenge and just something to, um, you know, and I've learned that I can't do it at bedtime because I always fall asleep. So I'm gonna challenge myself to choose a time, maybe when I first get up, or a time that I don't doze off reading it. But I will say, if you're gonna doze off reading something, what better thing to read you know, while you're dozing off? So anyway, there's your challenge for next year, and uh, my challenge for next year. All right, let's get started painting. We're gonna paint this little guy here, and hi Wanda. I'm so glad y'all are hopping on and that you haven't forgotten me. <laughs> and uh, I've been thinking about you. I've been watching all of your posts while I've been laying in bed uh, without a voice. But um, anyway, it is just so wonderful to see you on here. Okay, so we're going to paint this. We're going to paint it on. I just grabbed what I had. So I've got this board is going to be uh, quite a bit bigger uh, than this one. So... Um, which is fine. You can do it larger, smaller, and I just uh, kind of set this over here so I can kind of see what I'm doing here. Oh, I gotta get me some graphite paper. I did just kind of hand draw today. Um, see if you can see it. There we go. Just a little sketch uh, to fit on this side. I just kind of worked with it a little bit till I got it the size that I needed, and I forgot to get my graphite paper. Let me grab that right quick. I love having my closet. My closet is to my left, and I just have curtains on it, and I have, it looks a mess, I know, but it is a very organized mess, it really is. I know where everything is, everything's marked, but I love having it right here at my fingertips. So, um, very nice. Okay, so what we're gonna do is grab a pencil, I've got some black graphite paper, and I'm just going to let me get it off of the turntable there. And let me bring you down right quick. And I'm going to go ahead and trace the pattern on. This is almost a gray instead of a black. So we'll see how it's going to show up. I did go ahead and chalk the edges. I uh, left about a quarter of an inch of the edge around where I'm not going to paint that, the, the base coat color, because we're going to put gold around the edges. And I'm using extreme uh, extreme sheen gold deco art. I love, 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 love it. All right, so let's get it on here. Let me cut that extra piece off. And again, I did not practice this today. I, it's been probably 10 years since I painted the, uh, that one. I painted tons of them when I did it for a craft show. I probably painted 40 of them. Did snowman, uh, pumpkins, and then the Santa. So I did several of them. And um, but that's again, that's been like 10 years ago or so. And I'm gonna get a little piece of tape just to keep that still. Sometimes there's a little tip for you. Sometimes I use paper clips. But I always try to put something under my tape. This is just a bread wrapper. I think I saw this on uh, Painter's Clubhouse. Somebody else had posted this. But a lot of times I'll use, like I said, a, um, a paper clip or something to put under there. But it uh, helps me know where that edge is. So I'm just going to pull just a little piece off of here just to put to kind of keep it in place. 
And I'm gonna slide that right back under there. That's good for scotch tape too. And then I know where that is. Okay, so let me get it lined up here the way I had it drawn out. Got long sleeves on. It's been a little cold here in Texas. It was 80 degrees. And today it's been in the 30s. Okay, so I think we're good. Right about there. And um, so I put long sleeves on. But I may may regret that before this is over. <laughs> Got my fan going. So it should be okay there. Okay, so let's slide our graphite paper under here. Another thing, since I have been sick, let me make sure I can still see your comments. Yes. Hi, Doris. I called and left you a message today. Doris Cochran that is on here is the one, the picture that I posted of the beautiful, beautiful quilt uh, that I was given. Doris is the one that made that hand made that quilt. It is gorgeous. And I cannot tell you how special, special it is to me. Okay, so I've got my face down. I've got my graphite paper. And we're just going to trace over here. And uh, I will tell you I'm not a... I can't draw circles really well, so I always grab something and use it. So I have this little, you um, you make me happy when skies are gray. You are my sunshine is my song to all of my kids and my grandkids ever since they were born. So I'm always getting sweet little things from them. But this worked out to be perfect for the size of his head. And I just did a half circle on it. And that's kind of what I started with. But since I've been sick, I've been really shaky. So we may have a very shaky Santa Claus. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so we're going to get it just halfway there. Now, before I go any further, I want to make sure it's showing up. And I have to go just a little bit darker. I'm not sure where I got this graphite paper. I've got some more in the closet but I didn't want to dig it out but that is more of a black this is more of a kind of a charcoal gray and it just doesn't always show up real well but this wood it's pine wood and it's soft so it's going to leave just enough indention in it Kind of like if you were getting it laser cut, that I'll be able to see it. Okay, I'm not going to do those details yet on his face because we're going to base coat it. And we'll do the buttons. And his arms after that. I'm not even going to draw out... The Merry Christmas, we're just going to freehand that with a Posca pen. Um, we could paint it too, but again, as shaky as I've been, I think I would rather just use that Posca pen. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put his, um, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, no, we're, we'll go ahead and base coat on the face and then we'll put it back on there because we've got his beard. Let me see if I can go ahead and get that nose on there so I'll know. Whoops, kind of went over it there. And doing it a little hard. So it will leave that little indention. Let's go over his beard a little more. Now this is a kind of a curvy beard, fluffy beard, but you could certainly do it like we did the other ones. Uh, kind of a whiskery beard, wispy. 
Okay, that's got enough on there that I can see it. I'm going to go ahead and take that off. <clears throat> and we will set that aside. I'm going to put it right there so I can see it. And then we're going to get started just base coating. Okay, so you can see the barely see the lines on there. Just enough that I can tell where they are. And we're going to go ahead and do his head. Um, any flesh color would work fine. This is a bottle I've had forever. It's Ceram Coat by Delta. And the name of it happens to be Santa Flesh. So, you know, that was a no-brainer. <laughs> but I use kind of a, a lace color sometimes. Um, you know, just whatever I have that looks looks fleshy. Let's see if we can even get any out of this. It's so, there it comes. Good, 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 good. It's not going to take much because there's not much of his face here. But also, I've got his little nose, one of the half circles here, and I've got uh, a piece of tape taped down with the sticky side up, and he's on there, and we're, we'll get that nose painted while we're doing the face as well. Okay, so I'm just going to take... Um, a flat brush. This one happens to be a number eight. It's with uh, plaid. So I'm going to go ahead and get the nose painted over here so it will be drying. And we'll put a little bit of pink on it once we get it on. And we'll be gluing that on with uh, that stick fast glue. So I'll let that dry so I can <clears throat> put a second coat on it. Okay, let's see if this brush is going to work here. And it will take two coats. This is where his nose is going to be. I'm going to put a little bit on it, but I'm not too worried about it because that wooden nose is going to go over it but just in case some of it sticks out from under it where you can see it I'm going to go ahead and just base coat under it I'm going to go around his mustache and again this does not have to be real precise Y'all know me, I, don't, I never do anything precise. Hi, Ada. So the craft show that I uh, did at the Hell High School, several of you came and I got to meet you, which was awesome. But it was one of the best shows that I've ever had as far as sales. So that was encouraging. However, I had plans to do, I had signed up for at least one more show uh, and was going to possibly do a, another one, giving me three shows this month. And due to the pneumonia, being so sick, I had to cancel both of them. And um, so I've got a lot of stuff sitting over here still packed. So I'm anxious to get to do this um, in-home sale um, at the lady's house. And it's down south, um, and it's for um, her co-workers. I'm going to take a small brush, a liner brush, and um, fill in this little part here around his mustache. Fill it in just a little bit. And then I'm going to do a second coat on that um, nose while that's drying. So that was very disappointing that I did not get to do the other two shows. So hope 
hopefully. And we'll do well at the next one. I'm going to dry this just a, quickly so we can put a second coat on it. Even had some of you on here were in the show, the craft show. Judy Logston um, and her friend, and I'm so sorry, I cannot think of her name at the moment, <clears throat> but they were there, so they did really well. So we just had a good time visiting when we could. There were not a ton of shoppers there, but the ones that, that, that were there, I'm going to add just a little bit of water to that. What I just did, I was talking and not paying attention, I just dried that and then tried to put the second coat on it before it cooled down. Um, the board and paint was hot, so it kind of bubbled up. So you do need to let your wood cool down. My other dryer, it's, it's louder, but it has a cooling button that I usually push and um, cool it down before beforehand. Okay, so I'll need to dry it again in one more coat. But my favorite thing about the craft shows was, of course, making some of my money back that you've spent, you know, that you've um, put into everything. But my favorite part is just getting to see the community, all the visiting, the laughter, and walking around and seeing everybody else's creativity. It is just so, so much fun. All right, I'm going to let that cool for just a second before we put that second coat on so it doesn't bubble again on me. But if you've ever had that happen, if it just doesn't paint right after you've just dried it, more than likely that is why, because you didn't let the wood cool down enough, the, the paint cool. Okay, I think it's fine now. And I should have put some white under it first. It probably would have covered better. But I think it's going to do just fine. We are going to go to um, Rowlett Saturday. And my daughter's down there, and they have a Christmas boat parade on the lake down there. And um, they decorate all of the boats with lights and all kinds of stuff. I really, I don't, I'm not sure exactly what all to expect. Um, put one more coat on that little nose, clean my brush out. So I'm looking forward to that. It's supposed to be. This Friday, it's supposed to be in the 80s, and then the high on that Saturday is only going to be 50. So, welcome to Texas. It's always up and down, up and down. You never know what it's going to be. Okay, so for the beard, I'm going to go ahead and base coat it in white, uh, and then we're going to put a coat of gray on it, and then, um, and then we'll do some little wispies. That's what I call I don't know what else to call them. But some little wispy. I like the gray undertone on it. I guess we really don't even have to do a white base coat on it. Let's go ahead and do our gray. So I'm going to use slate gray to put the base on his mustache and his um, and his beard. So I think this gray will cover well enough that we won't um, have to do a, a white underlay on it. And I'm going to use this small. Let's see if this little small flat. Um, the number's gone. Oh, it's a number two. Royal Lang Nickel number two. So I'm just getting my brush a little damp and then blotting it off. And let's see if this brush works. And I do this a lot. I will start with one brush and think, oh, no, that's not the, not the coverage I want. It's not doing what I want it to do, so I'll change. Okay, yeah, I think that's going to do just fine for, at least for outlining it. Get 
you thinking, why the gray beard? Santa's beard is white. Well, we're going to get a lot of white on it. Um, <clears throat> and it just kind of gives you a base because no beard is just completely white. It usually has uh, a few of the... Um, gray whiskers in it, but it just makes your white actually show up better. And there's all kinds of shapes that you can do his beard in. Uh, you've seen me do several in the other videos. Now I'm just putting my brush flat down, flattening it out just to go around these edges and just kind of getting it outlined. <clears throat> and then we'll fill it in. Smoothing out the little ridges. And I'm probably going to get paint on this shirt before we're done. One good thing if you can say good about being sick for so long. I think I've, so far, I've seen every single Hallmark movie. Christmas Hallmark movie. At least twice. And I'm up to date on all the new ones. And I will say that Hallmark is adding some things into their movies this year. I won't go into it. This is not the place, but that I'm very disappointed in. Okay, and I'm just smoothing it out. I'm just kind of wisping it, even for the undertone, for the base coat. And then I'm going to go back to my larger flat and fill it in. And we'll do the um, beard, I mean the mustache as well here in a minute. <clears throat> and you guys are going to, sorry, going to have to put up with me clearing my throat throughout this. And I debated. I thought, okay, do I give it another week before I go live? So hopefully I'm not coughing and snipping. I thought, no, I can't wait another week. I'm missing everybody. I know we don't physically see each other, but you are extended family in my mind. And if I'm not with you at least once a week, I miss you guys. Okay, so I think that's covered pretty well. I'm going to do a little bit lighter. Not quite as thick on the mustache. But I'm going to switch to um, a round. Just a small round. Where are you? There you are. And I can still see where I drew with the pencil underneath this gray. We still have to do the, the background. Could have just done the background first. Probably would have been easier. But we're going to make it work.
And again, I'm not too worried about the nose because it's going to be covered up with the wood piece. And that's with just the little half circles that I purchased off of Amazon. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and um, I'm going to put one more coat over his face and add a little bit of water to it. If y'all can hear the train going by in the background, if my grand dog Milo were here, she would be barking like crazy. So I'm going to go ahead and um, base coat with our green, but I'm going to outline here. Okay, I can see it all right. So I'm going to go to a, a larger, uh, one inch flat. Hi, Miss Jean and Lynn and Mandy. Hi, ladies. So we're going to use, um, I think it was pine green that I used on the original one uh, for his suit. But this is dark Hauser green. A little bit lighter, but I think it'll be just fine. Okay, so I'm going to stay within the lines that I have drawn here, that quarter inch, because we're going to add gold on that. Now, I think one of um, something else that is causing us to have to do more than one coat or um, several coats, this piece of wood, I have no idea where it came from. Somebody gave it to me, I think. But it looks like it has been spray sealed. Um, so I am having to put a little more paint on it to get it to cover. Could have lightly sanded it had I noticed beforehand that it had the sealer on it. But I didn't, so. We're just going to, again, we're going to make it work. All right, so I'm going to go around his arm. Now his arm comes all the way off. So, well, that doesn't, though. That's not his arm. That's our background color. His arm will be red. Okay, so once I use the baby wipe to keep it moist, I put it under under my wet rag over here, and that keeps it moist. Pretty color green. Just getting right up to that edge. And I'm not even keeping it, you know, just completely straight around the edge. I just want a little guideline for that gold. Direction. 
I have not wrapped one Christmas gift yet. I, I'm almost done. I just have like two gifts left to purchase. And my Santa closet is full to the brim. So I think Thursday. We always have our Christmas, um, our Savage Family Christmas, the weekend before Christmas, the Saturday before Christmas. Um, I started that several years ago so that my uh, married children, my daughter-in-laws, could spend time with their family, too. Um, I don't care if it's not exactly on Christmas Day, just so we get together. So that way, and I wanted my married children to be able to spend time with their children, you know, have their Christmas. So we just work it around all that. So everybody is happy and can be with everybody that they need to be with. And we never know who's going to show up at our Christmas. We always have some extras and some, you know, some visitors. And so that works out great for me. I'm the more the merrier. Okay, I'm going to switch back to this little liner brush, little round brush, just to kind of outline it around his beard, and then we'll fill it in. Another thing I've been having trouble with, and that's why I, I think why I get so shaky, since, ever since I've had COVID. I mean, I had to take blood pressure medicine before COVID, but since I had COVID, um, it's hard to control it. Like this morning, it, I woke up, it was great. It was like 114 over something. Within two hours, it was 200 and something over 90 something. So it just, it's just so random. So I really have to stay on top with it, top of it. And I can tell when it starts going up. The signs are there. I just have to think about it. Okay, so I'm just kind of outlining around his head. I think it's easier with this small brush and then just fill in with the larger one. And that'll give the beard time to draw. Does everybody have your tree up? I have one strand of light. Mine's a pre-lit tree. I've got one strand of lights that decided to go out after I had it all decorated. Okay, now that's going to be the red as well. So I went a little bit over onto his jacket there, his coat, which is going to be red. So I'm going to get that green off. Because his shoulder is right here. And it goes across the gold. Second coat around it. I love Santa's and oh, and snowman. I just dropped that on my shirt. Get it off real quick. All gone. Another reason to have handy wipe, I mean, uh, baby wipes handy. Okay, let's fill it in with this. 
smaller brush. The lines are there from the graphite paper, but the way this light is shining on it, it's hard for me to, to see some of them. Are you painting a lumberjack? <laughs> It kind it does kind of look like a lumberjack, doesn't it? Uh, I'm reversing the colors, but this is what we're painting. We're painting Santa. It says Merry Christmas. Just on a um, scrap piece of wood. Okay, so I'm going to get... Let's see my other little brushes here. Just another small flat. It's got a little bit, I think, a little bit better chisel on it. Oh, no, it's got some dry paint in it. That's not going to work. That one's better. And I'm just getting right up against that chalk line that I had put on earlier. Now with that outlined around his head, that makes it much easier. First coat always looks terrible. And then once you go over it with that second second coat and get all the wood grain covered up. It always looks better. Another reason I wore long sleeves tonight, my um, Christmas tree, I didn't have long sleeves on when I was doing it and it just like attacked me. So I've got places on my arms from putting it together, <laughs> bruises everywhere. It looks like somebody's been beating me. So I thought, well, I'm just going to wear long sleeves and cover it up. But they actually feel good up here tonight. Okay, I got a little bit of green on that, on his face, but we'll, we'll get it off. When I paint, when it's just me, I pick my piece up and it's up here and, you know, I've got it up here right in my face, but, and that's how I'm most comfortable painting. I get it right up to me and I hold it and, um, but for lives, I mean, you can't see what I'm doing if I do it that way. So it does sometimes feel a little awkward for me. He does look like a lumberjack. I hadn't thought about that. Lumberjack Santa. A lot of little places in here. Let's stand it up on the chisel edge. I don't care if it's an exactly straight line. We'll go over it with that gold. Okay, so everything's covered. Let me dry it, and we'll put a second coat on it right quick. You could even put some tiny real buttons um, on him, but I'm just going to paint them on tonight. Hi, Vicki. You still need to put up your tree? Well, good. I don't feel so bad then. <laughs> I felt like I was really late. Lynn's got hers up and mostly decorated. What colors do you decorate in? Mine's traditional reds and greens and, and white. My tree, everything that goes on my tree has to be shiny for it so that it will reflect the lights. I like the shiny. Um, but I do the reds, whites, clears, um, anything glossy. And then I have a big, um, oh, it's about three feet tall grape vine tree that I put the muted colors on, um, like the, the country, like what we're doing tonight.
Okay, I'm going to let that cool for just a second. See if I need another coat on there. Oh, I think he's fine there. Okay, I'm going to take uh, my small liner brush. You can see that. And I'm going to go ahead and wisp out some um, white. It's getting a little dry. But some whiskers on his, just kind of outline his mustache so that we'll know. So while that's cooling down, we'll do that. Just wisping it out there, but mainly right now I'm just separating it from uh, the beard. Okay, and then I'm just going to make some little... curly cues and um, kind of watering it down because I want it to flow. And we're going to cover most of that gray up, but there will still be some showing just to give us a base. I'll kind of let that um, dry just a little bit and I'm going underneath, I mean I'm going over that nose a little um, because it's not going to show but just in case you have a little bit that shows it will be cohesive under there. Okay, so there's the, the difference in the two. Brush wet again. And I just keep reloading. And I'm not putting much pressure. Okay, let's see if I've got just a little bit darker gray. I don't want black, but let's go ahead and use a darker gray. Um, this is, it just says gray and it's Anita's. Just to uh, separate the mustache a little more, we're gonna um, shade underneath get a shading brush here. I think this one will work. I'm just going to go back to that number eight flat and going to get the base coat color on here. Just kind of work it in and then just a little, little bit on that corner. You're probably not going to be able to see it on camera, but it is just a little bit on that corner. I can see it there. And we'll just go just underneath his mustache and the nose part. And just really blend it in. And a little more of the dark.
Okay, and that'll separate it even more. And then we'll do all of our white, white wispies on it a minute in a second. So let's go ahead and get um, the rest of our green for the background. And then we'll go to the red to do his coat. And I'm going back to that um, one inch flat. All right, I'm going to pull my sleeve up here so I hopefully don't get it on it again. This would also be pretty in a, um, like a midnight blue. Be really pretty. The background. I'm just flattening out that corner on the edges there. Now that we've got that base coat in, we've got our good um, guidelines. A little more moisture. If your paint's dragging, having a hard time getting it to flow, just add a little bit of water. And by the time you get the words and the snowflakes on here, it's going to cover most of it up anyway. This is a great color to use for the base of pine needles on your pine branches. It's the dark Hauser or Hauser dark green. Okay, I'm going to switch to that smaller brush to get over in these little areas. I could probably do it with the larger one, but not when I'm shaky, shaky. My dad's nickname was Shaky. He had shaky hands, and his name was Robert, but um, everybody called him Shaky. And he was an outstanding electrician, so he didn't let it get in his way. Okay, and I'm just... Put a second coat in here where I can see the grain of the wood coming through. Just following the curve of the beard. paint this on just about anything. I ordered some more of the um, chunky little canvases that I've been Mod Podging everything on. I tried to order them last week and um, they were out of stock for everybody. So a lot of people are doing it. I order them from Walmart. Hobby Lobby and Michaels are both super expensive on them. So I wait until I can get them from Walmart. Okay, I'm just going to add some water to this green a little bit over here. I'm just kind of getting it pretty thin just to kind of go over and smooth some of these ridges out. I 
Okay, so we've got our background. I'm going to go ahead and dry it right quick just so I don't drag my arm across it. We are having Christmas this year. We switch every year. Like one year it'll be at my house. Thanksgiving's usually pretty much all the time at my house. Um, our house. My husband owns it too. <laughs> but um, Christmas, we always switch each year. We'll have it at um, my house one year and then uh, my daughter-in-laws will have it at theirs. I have three daughter-in-laws now. So we'll switch up between them. This year we're having it at my daughter's house. She lives down by, um, she lives in Rowlett. And um, she's got a, a pretty big house. It's a rent home. And, but it's got a lot of space in it. So we usually have 15, 13, to, 13 to 17 people, depending on who else shows up. And for Thanksgiving, we always, let me make sure I didn't drop some paint down here. There we go. Thanksgiving, we always do the traditional Thanksgiving foods, ham, turkey, you know, all that good stuff. But for Christmas, uh, we always vote on what we want. Do we want uh, the traditional food? Do we want Mexican food? Do we want Italian food? This year, the vote was to have a big all-out breakfast. So uh, we're going to have breakfast foods, cas breakfast casseroles, uh, blueberry muffins, biscuits. To, I don't know what all we're going to have, to be honest. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put a base of white under, his, uh, under the red so that it will cover better. So let's go ahead and just put a quick, quick coat of that down. And um, he goes all the way across, so We'll just go ahead and get that on real quick. Oh, that white looks bright up against that green. Let's see what color it is. Uh, Ceram coat white. Um, I think it has out of the all of the whites that I've used. I think it has the best coverage. Now gray is also a very good color to uh, to put under red. It really helps it to uh, cover well. But since his beard's already gray, I think we'll just do white and I think we'll be fine. And I'll come up with that smaller brush to get around his beard. It is very different painting on this already sealed. I'm having to put a little more moisture in the paint. Let's see if we can get up in there with the smaller one. For the red, I'm going to be using uh, Deco Art Tuscan Red, my, one of my favorite reds. I really, really like it. It covers very well. Once we get the details on the Santa, It'll go much faster. I was able to finally go to church this weekend, uh, Sunday, and I did get out with my husband, and we did finish up most of our Christmas shopping. Several times I had to just uh, sit in the truck 
and let him go in, but I was able to get out and about some, so it was nice, nice to get out of the house. And I will be taking my mom to do a little bit of shopping tomorrow. I told her to bring her cane. And what I didn't tell her is, even if you think you don't need it, bring it because I might need it too. <laughs> so we may be we may be sharing her cane or, or fighting over her cane tomorrow. We'll see. Hi, Ashley. A shelf? No. It's uh, it's gonna be a hanger. Here's the smaller one. And I'm just kind of reversing the colors. So it's Santa. Uh, when I do the snowman, I do a blue background and the, the snowman on it. So it's going to be a hanger, but um, I don't know that it's really... Well, you could actually do anything. It does sit. It sits up. So you could put it on a shelf to uh, for it to sit. I guess you could make a shelf out of it. I hadn't really thought about it. It's just a piece of wood I've had laying around for a while. I, before I got into um, Painter's Clubhouse, I didn't really do door hangers. Um, I just like to paint on anything that's laying around. I like to take things um, like the candle holders I showed you at the beginning of the video, I love to repurpose things. Even if they're just, you know, s small things, but um, I refurbished that little girl's table and chair set. Of course, it stayed the same thing that it was meant to be for. Um, but I, lo I just love taking things in and refurbishing them. I think I'm going to be making... Um, I'm going to try to make several different type things um, this next year. I'm going to be cutting out some, um, maybe some paper towel holders. And I've got some little benches that I just love doing, but I'm out of them. I've only got one left. And I, uh, the gentleman that I used to have cut them for me, he lost the pattern. They moved and somehow the pattern got lost and I didn't have a copy of it. So um, I'm going to take the one that I have left, I'm going to take it apart and make a pattern out of it. And the gentleman that, that used to make them that I got, got the uh, pattern from, he's no longer in business. So I don't mind using the pattern for my purposes now. And hopefully, maybe I can share it with you. Okay, so there's is just a base coat of white just to get that red on. And again, gray is probably better to put under your white, um, but the white should work too, especially with the Tuscan. Tuscan red because it covers so well. Looks like our little nose is all done. So we'll put it on here. It's going to be so cute. Now with this, uh, this uh, heated craft dryer, it's so quiet, but you have to really be careful and not get to talking and hold it in one spot or it's going to bubble your paint up. So I constantly keep it moving because I did do that once. I thought you were painting on a shelf, kind of like how to paint. Oh, on the cabin doors. No, it's just a it's just a piece of wood. So it'll just be a wall hanger, shelf sitter. I do have several shelves little girl shelves that I uh, did for the craft show. I think I've only got one left. Okay, so while that is drying, 
let's go ahead and, um, while that's cooling, let's go ahead and put the gold around our edges. And this is Deco Art Extreme Sheen Gold. And boy, does it glimmer. I love it. Okay, let me decide which brush size I want to use for that. We'll just go with a number 10, low Cornell number 10, flat brush, and we'll just brush it on there. So shimmery, and I'm even going to let some get on the, um, get you up here a little closer in the green. I don't I don't even care if it gets some in the green. Okay. Ooh, see how that glimmers. Shimmers maybe is the better word. <clears throat> you could even put it on the outer edges um, of it. I was first introduced to, th to this gold at one of Tamara Bennett, uh, Tamara Bennett with Southern Adornments Decor. Um, at one of her lives, they had us use it on a project, and immediately I was addicted, kind of like the diamond dust. It was like, you know, what a score. I love it. And I've got other golds up here um, that I use, but they just do not cover like this one does, and they don't shimmer like the other ones. <clears throat> I mean, like this one. Okay, so we've got just a little, a little bit up here. And I actually poured a little bit too much out of the bottle, so I will scoop it back up. And save it. I'm trying to get better about doing that. <laughs> okay, and there's our gold. So before I wash my brush out, I'm going to scoop that up, the leftover, and put it back back in it looks like real gold okay waste not what not so if you're just now hopping on and you haven't seen the beginning of the um, video after we're done, go back and watch the beginning. Uh, I did give you a challenge. I gave myself and you a challenge for the upcoming new year. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and dry this gold real quick because I know that I will drag my arm across it. So I gave you a challenge. So go back and, and look at the beginning of the video once I've posted it. And hopefully, you will be up for the challenge as well. <clears throat> Not sure what all the spring is going to hold for us. We um, see a little spot here that that gold didn't cover. 
that I didn't get some I was wanting to do another e uh, event, but I'm not sure yet if I'm going to be able to because uh, my hubby is wanting to put the house on the market. I'm not positive that we're doing that yet. Um, still would stay in the area, but he is ready for a one-story house and a smaller yard. We have a, a, an acre. He actually mows a little over an acre because he mows our neighbors as well. And um, so we'll see. I look at just this room alone and and think of having to pack everything, and my anxiety level just goes crazy. <laughs> so. So we'll see how it pans out, but I don't want to plan anything and then we'd be right in the middle of, of moving. So it's kind of what I've been holding off for. Okay, so let's get some red on this Santa. Try to use the, this bottle's almost empty, so I'm going to try to empty it out. Probably just put... Way too much out, but oh well. Okay, so I'm going to kind of get it outlined first. Sorry, try to keep you in camera. Now, had I put gray down, you might not even have to put a second coat. already I feel like Christmas red and green instantly now I know um, how did I do at the craft show Lynn it was the best one I've had ever as far as sales it was amazing um, I didn't come home with much at all and it was just everybody was just so ready to see each other because it had been so long since COVID. They did not have it last year because of COVID. Um, there were not very many people there. Now, there were vendors there, but as far as shoppers, there weren't very many. At, after about noonish, maybe one ish, it just kind of really died down. But the ones that were that were there early on were definitely buying. I sold a ton of stuff. And I know Judy uh, Logston, I'm not sure if she's on here tonight, but um, she was also there and she said they did really well. I was disappointed that there weren't more people there. They just didn't do much advertising. And I think a lot of people didn't think they, that uh, they were having it again. So I think that was part of the problem. But again, the ones that were there bought like crazy and everybody did really well that I talked to. And it was my best one sales-wise to date. So I'm not complaining. Now I'm doing his um, coat first before we do the beard because I want some of the beard to kind of probably wisp out over the red. Here my hubby fixing his supper. He had to work a little late. And um, usually when I go live, if I don't have something already fixed up on Tuesday nights, like in the crock pot or whatever, um, he likes to fix uh, breakfast, a breakfast meal. And 
just a little bit of water to that. So he'll fix him some eggs and toast and maybe oatmeal or malt meal uh, I did leave some sausage cooked. So he's having a good breakfast tonight. Okay, so I'm just getting a base coat put on here. And then we'll use that larger brush here in just a second to smooth it all out. <clears throat> okay, let's go ahead and get that dried. Okay, well he's starting to look more like Santa than a lumberjack. <laughs> now this one will not go outdoors. So instead of spray sealing it, I will just matte Mod Podge. I don't use the um, glossy Mod Podge because it never, never, never completely dries. Ten years from now, it will still be sticky. So I use the matte. And I usually just do the, depending on the piece. If it's painted on the back, I'll put some on the, the front. I mean on the back too, but... Typically, I just do the edges and the, and the front of it, depending on what it is. Okay, so I have to let that cool for just a second. It really gets, gets warm. And then I will use jute to hang it. And I may or may not do a bow. I'm not sure, but we'll have Merry Christmas up here in, in just a moment. <laughs> Take this plate here and dry it just a little bit. Cool it off. Okay. I think that'll do it. On that, let's see if I can get most of it with this bigger brush. And then we'll go over around the edges again. Such a pretty red. I think we're going to go to... Um, Tyler here in a few weeks. We have a timeshare um, in one of the places is in Tyler, which is just about, oh, about two and a half to three hours from us. I'm just going to spend a weekend over there. It's just about 30 minutes from Canton, which is a huge, huge, huge flea market. Um, Trades Day. They usually have in one weekend they usually have three to four hundred thousand people that go. And they've got three hundred, four hundred, five hundred vendors. I don't know. If you're familiar with Build Across, they have a, um, I think they actually have a building there. But they're there every, it's always the first Monday weekend. And they have a little bit of everything. I thought about doing a booth there one time, but oh my goodness, you'd have to have a lot of product. They have one whole block that is nothing but animals. Um, puppies, kittens, pigs, ostriches. What else have I seen there before? Llamas. All kinds of different species of, of chickens and beautiful roosters. But my favorite, of course, my favorite, favorite part is 
what they call Dog Alley. <clears throat> and it is, um, it's under a covered building and it has, uh, they have them in play pens and they have every kind of puppy you can imagine. People that raise them. And they'll have a section that has free puppies. We've gotten a couple from there. That were sweethearts that we had for years. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit of water on that just to thin that paint out a little. I'm going to go up around his beard just a little more. Okay, look at that. I'm having a hard time with the light. Okay, let's draw it out and see what the coverage looks like on that. But I love, love, love to go uh, to Canton. It's a lot of walking, and you have to be prepared. Wear, wear really good shoes. Uh, they have some wonderful food, food booths, food trucks, um, and, and some are sit-down places. They have, I think... 13 or four, maybe up to 20 now huge buildings that are just booth after booth after booth but you can get gorgeous furniture uh, wood furniture rustic furniture antiques lots of this kind of painting um, baby clothes purses luggage just about anything you can think of, you're going to find it there. And that's in Canton, Texas, and it's just um, just west, I think, of Tyler. But it is so much fun. Okay, I am going to put one more little quick coat over that. Cool it down a little bit. Okay, he's starting to look like the jolly man that he is. Squeaky plates. Okay, cool enough. Cool enough. Let me get my little sample here and see what we did. Okay, now the sample is, again, his coat is green and this is red and we did it just the opposite. <clears throat> okay, so one more good coat of that red on it. And I'm going to shade around uh, the edge of it. This wood has got some little crevices in it. And you would think with it being sealed that it wouldn't matter, but I'm having to work that paint down in there. Okay, and I think that got it. I think we're good there. 
Okay, so while that's still just a little bit damp, I'm going to grab some rockwood red <coughs> and do a little bit of shading. <coughs> so it's Deco Art Rockwood Red. It's just a little bit darker, a lot darker. It's almost a, a burgundy. And um, I'm going to leave the paint on my brush, the red. And just get some on the, just on the edge, on the corner. And do just a little bit of shading around his suit. Still just a little bit, almost too wet. Sorry, I have to hold it up when I can't see it because of the light. Okay, let me see if that's showing up. Yes, it is. I'm not sure if, if you can tell but it does have the shading there. I'll do it on the other side. Just kind of blending it in and we'll do a little bit under his beard. Probably would do better with a little bit smaller brush. And again, we're going to come over most of this with his beard, but it will be there for where that doesn't cover. Now we could do a little bit more moisture in that. Where his arms should be. Now on this one, I didn't do any arms. I just left it like that. But let's see if we can get some arms in this one. Let's see. Let's do it about right here. do this one over here just kind of defined the the arm and this one will do about oh, right here and just kind of curving it down Okay, so now he's got, let's see if you can see, there we go. So, and he's kind of leaning sideways on purpose. Smooth that out just a tad. Okay, now let's work on his beard. Get some more white. And his 
beard's a little bit it's longer than the um, than the mustache, so I'm gonna get a little bit longer liner brush. And I'll put that red, wash my red brush out in there. So now the water's kind of red, but I'll mix it in enough that you won't be able to tell. Okay, so I got that liner loaded. Now let's go ahead and start giving him a beard. Let me draw that red just a little bit. Okay, so I want the um, the beard to kind of out, kind of down straight here, and then out and about around the edges here. So let me get a little more. Oops, off of that. So the. Um, the whiskers here on the mustache are going a separate direction, so that will also help define it. So I'm just gonna start wisping it out in the direction that it, it uh, the beard should go. Now this is how I also did the beards on the um, large Santas that I did not too long ago. I do like for my paint when I'm doing this to be really thin, so I'm adding water as I go. But you could also do it um, just plain white, or you could do curly cues in it. several different ways that you could do it. You could take a rake brush and uh, do it that way. You could pounce it on. Here's what we've got so far. If you can see that. And you just keep layering it and layering it until you get it the consistency that you want. And I'm trying to cover up that harsh line, uh, the outline. And I'm wisping uh, out, outwards on this side, and then on this side we'll wisp out on the, in the opposite direction. crisscrossing and letting them go over the suit and we're going to cover most of the gray up but we're going to leave just enough underneath it that it really helps the white to show and again, I'm dipping in, uh, putting a little bit of water in it, thinning it down, thinning it down. Sorry the way this apron is scrunching up. It makes me look like I'm about nine months PG, <laughs> I guess is a nice way to put it. Okay, and I'm coming down a little bit straight, straight down from his nose, but then wisping them out at the end. If you're, if this kind of intimidates you, I would suggest that you do it on a piece of cardboard or colored poster board, the shiny side, uh, or on um, anything that you have that you can just paint on to kind of practice.
getting a little more curly up here. A little bit of white that flaked on there. We'll have to put some red over. So I'm doing little short ones. I'm doing long ones underneath. And then coming back with uh, short ones over it. It's just layer, layer, layer. Let me get you back down here where you can see a little better. Now, I don't want a harsh dot looking like it's starting in the middle of the beard. So I'm kind of smoothing that out. I have a very uh, funny post that we'll be posting sometime tomorrow. I don't know what time I scheduled it to post about a roll. And it was quite the experience. And we're still dealing with it. So I won't give it away. You'll have to read that post. So I can still see that dark shading underneath uh, the beard. So now I'm in the middle here, so now I'm going to start going the other direction. And I'm not worrying too much about up here what this looks like because that nose, that wooden nose, is going to cover it. Now if I were painting the nose, it would be a little different. When my paint starts dragging, I add more water. When you're doing line work, you really want it to, to flow. Sorry, this one's going a little bit longer than normal. No, mine are normally always two hours. Um, but this might take just a little longer than that. So I'm just going to go right up into that nose because I know that it's going to be covered. Okay, I'm going to go upside down to flick it the other way. I think it just makes a prettier stroke for me. It's a little more comfortable that way. I'm letting it go over that red. Notice how I'm turning. I'm flicking it out. And I'm loading very frequently. thicker down here to kind of cover that gray and we'll do even a little bit more here in a minute kind of layer it and layer it and layer it some more because you don't want the gray completely showing um, you want the white to be the most prominent but you do want some of the gray showing and we're gonna have his buttons going down this way Now on this one, the original one, 
we didn't go to all that trouble. We just did the scallops, white, and just a few little wispy. Honestly, this was 10 to 12 years ago. I didn't even know how to do what I'm doing right now. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to hit you. I didn't know how to do this. I didn't know this technique. So it just takes um, not giving up and staying with it. And I promise the more you do it, the more comfortable you will get with it. And you'll start learning all kinds of little tricks that will make it easier for you. I I like using this liner brush to do it. There may be another brush that, that is more comfortable for you. As long as you get the result that you're looking for, that you're wanting, it doesn't matter really what brush you use. Some people are super intimidated um, by the liner brush. So I'm curious to know, it's 8.30. Are you watching me uh, in bed trying to get sleepy? Are you just getting home from work? What are you doing? A lot of times when I'm watching someone this late, I will, um, this is really not that late, but I will put my earbuds in so I don't disturb my hubby and watch that way. All right, let me see how that's looking here. Okay, so here's what we've got so far. I don't know if you can see that. It's looking pretty much like a beard. Okay, let me kind of eyeball it here and See where I want a little more, a little more coverage. Now on this layer, I'm really curling them. Almost like curly cues. This side. Now I'm doing shorter strokes, really curling them up, almost crisscrossing what I just did. That way it looks like a whole nother layer. quite a bit to the edge here. Covering up some more of that gray. We are just about done with this beard. Just making it a little thicker along the edge here to cover up that gray. A little more on the edge so it's not quite so harsh around the edge.
Okay, I want a little more on this, this edge over here. Shows up a little better on that green and that gold. Let's put a little more on the mustache. Okay, I'm going to make one more good swap over it. Okay, I think that looks beardy enough. Okay, so I'm going to take um, cactus flower and I'm going to shade the top of his head. And we're going to shade uh, a little bit on the nose. Just a little bitty dot of it. I'm going to get some of that base color, his head color. Just going to get it on my brush. And just with a little bit of that pink, just a little bit on the tip, on that corner. We'll go around. I have to be careful because that's still a little wet. And just kind of blend and shade shade that in. Got a little bit on that green. Get that little part of his face underneath the, on the underside of his mustache. Okay, now I'm going to try to blend that in because I've got a little bit too much that my water, this is the color of my water right now. So, <laughs> a little bit of that, that dark color in it. So, it went down a little bit further than what I want. So, I'm going to wipe some of it off. And then I'm going to blend it in with that um, little bit of the base color. Just going to put that back on there and just tone it down. Okay, and again, it's not gonna matter on the um, nose, I mean, underneath the nose, a little bit above his mustache. And let's go ahead and put <clears throat> just a tad at what the top of his nose will be. Tad, if tad's a word. Okay, so we've got at the top of his nose as well. Let that dry and then we will stick that on there with the glue. Now, I'm debating on his, on his eyes if I want to just do the um, dots for his eyes like in the original. that 
green back on there where the mat went off. So there's the original with just dots for the eyes and the eyebrows. Or I can do my um, eyes like I like to do like this. will take just a little bit longer but let's go ahead and I think I'm going to go ahead and do the um, while that's drying really well we'll do the Merry Christmas and I'm going to first do it just kind of outline it with a chalk pencil to see how I want it I think we're just going to do the simple with serifs. Okay, so I think that'll work okay. Okay, so this is just a 5M Posca pen. And that'll take just a minute to draw. And go ahead and do our snowflakes. And where the chalk line, I got off the chalk line, um, once that dries, I can just wipe that off. Since I used the Posca pen, I was just thinking I will probably spray seal it since I, I used that. So let's use with our uh, long liner brush. Let's go ahead and do some snowflakes. So I'm going to water my white down. And I'm going to use that um, <clears throat> long liner brush. And let's do some snowflakes here and there. Now the other one I splattered snow on it as well, and I will do that after we do the, the snowflakes. So I have to be careful because that's still wet. So you make a T, and then a little a short X, and then see what I did with my little daughter tool. I thought I had gotten it out. Maybe I didn't. We'll use a different one. It's here somewhere. Okay, so I'm just going to dip and dot. So we're going to put one right here in the middle. And then one, one on each tip of the line. You could do more and go all the way in, but for time's sake, I'm not going to do it that way. Okay, let's get a, another snowflake on there. And we'll go back and dot them all at once. Making some big, some small. Get that a little long. 
longer. And let's put some up here at the top. dots on that one. Now as soon as I finish my live I'll find the daughter that I was wanting, the larger one. So dot in the middle. Probably splatter it here in just a minute. See what we're, how we're doing on time. My white's getting a little dry. We still need to do his buttons as well. Now when I'm doing these not live, I lay 10 to 12 of them out at a time. And in about two to three hours, I can have them all done. I just do a assembly line, batch painting is what it's called. If you're new on here tonight, I had several that were asking about my lives and um, about my business this past week that we're going to watch for the first time. And I know sometimes, even though you're on here, you're a little shy about speaking up. I understand that completely. But um, if you want to just, just comment hi. And I'll know that you were here. And I would really, really, really appreciate all of us painters um, that do these lives. It helps us tremendously if you sprinkle the videos among your media. Um, we can't use the word S-H-A-R-E. Facebook does not like us using that word for some reason. So we say sprinkle the paint, spread the paint, sprinkle the love. Um, that's what we mean when we say those phrases. It is. Please um, sprinkle this among your media with your friends and family. It is very, very important for our algorithm. Um, it just does so much, so, so much for us. So we really appreciate it when you do that. Okay, so think the beard is dry enough. Let's do some buttons. And I want them larger than what... Well, the other one might have fallen in the floor. Who knows? So let's use the end of one of the paintbrushes to do the buttons. So I'm going to put um, a little bit of gold just in the lid of this and see if we can dip it that way. Thanks, Lynn. 
it, it does look real. It's, um, let's compare here. And I think the other one's cute too, and I would, I would buy it. But look at the difference um, in, in the beards. With just, just some flicking strokes with a liner brush. Now, I had the right idea. I did put a little bit of gray in there, but I have learned that it looks more real if you put the gray down first. And you could even come in with a little bit lighter gray and, and flick a little bit over the top of it. But it, it does definitely make a difference. Okay, so I've got some gold in the lid here. Let me see if I've got enough. I'm just going to do some dots for his buttons. So, and he is leaning a little sideways. Let's put one more. Oops. Okay, so he's got some buttons now. While my red is still wet, I got a little tiny bit. I gotta remember these dots over here are wet. It takes your dots a little longer to dry. Once these are dry, I'll put two little black dots in there to make them look more like uh, buttons. Okay, so let's vote on the eyes. Um, thank you, Vicki. Do we want to just do dots for his eye? Whoops, that doesn't go on there. I do need to do some eyebrows. Let's go ahead. Well, let's stick, we'll stick his nose on last here in a minute. Let me see if I can get those buttons dry a little bit. And our dots. I don't want to bubble it, so keep it moving. Okay, while that is drying, let's go ahead and stick his nose on. Well, I take that back. Let's go ahead and do a little bit of splattering on it to kind of add some more to the snow effect. I'm going to use an old toothbrush. I'm going to get it wet. You don't want it super wet. You just want it moist. And I'm adding just a little bit of, you know, that's just got too much red in it. So I'm going to wash that brush out. And I've got some more water over here, some clean water that we're going to use. And we are going to use a different plate. Oops, and that's running everywhere. There we go. I'm going to put a little bit of white down. It's not going to take much at all. Now I'm going to get a little bit of my clean water. And I'm going to water it down just a little bit. And it, I mean, not a lot. I just want it a little bit inky. And you want to get the big drips off. You don't want it dripping everywhere. So I've got it just on the end here. And a lot of people will do it like this, where you just take it and flick it, I mean, and just bounce it on your finger. I like to kind of, um, I'm going to cover his head up, because I don't want it really all over his face. 
So I like to just use my thumb and just flick it that way. And you want to be careful. You don't want any huge drips like that, which means I have a little bit too much water in it. So I'm just going to take my baby wipe and soak that up. Do the same on this one. I'll put just a little more green over it. I used to would just panic if I had a mistake like that. But I've learned that they're all fixable. No big deal. Let's only get a little bit of green. That other green's gone on the plate. So let's try to just kind of go over that a little bit. So it doesn't look so much like a galaxy. And then we'll finish the splattering. Just like it never happened. I am going to go ahead and dry it just a tad. So it doesn't, the white doesn't mix in with it. Get some of that water out of there. covering his head because I don't want it all over his face. I'll put just a little bit on his suit. Okay, I think that's enough there. All right, let me clean my thumb off. White's not so bad, but when you're doing it with black or color like that, you have to get the old uh, hand sanitizer out, and that, that cleans it really well. Okay, so that added another whimsical feature to it. And look at my handwriting. I'm so shaky tonight. It is not anything special, but it looks fine. You know, it's okay. Um, so I am going to take a little bit of this black and put some little dots in his buttons with my little tiny daughter. Now we've got the buttonholes. Every little step makes such a difference. Okay, now I've got to decide how I want to do the eyes. I need to go ahead and place the nose to make sure that everything's covered there. Putting the shading up at the top. <laughs> decisions, decisions. Okay. I think we are going to Get that black dry. Okay. 
Okay, I think I'm going to do the uh, cutesy eyes. That's what I call them. So his nose is going to be right there. Make sure those are dry. I don't want to lay my hands in them. So his face is kind of sideways, so I've got to be careful how I do. So I'm just kind of freehanding these eyes on here. And then we're going to pounce some of the white. Let's do some of the gray first for his, we want some eyebrows. And let's see, where's the gray that we used? Okay, that slate gray. Might have enough under here that is still wet to use that. Yes. So it had kind of gotten crusty on the top and I just opened it up to use some of that gray. We are almost done, ladies. You're going, it's about time. It's been two and a half hours already. Now, I also need to, well, we're going to do that in white first, uh, underneath the eyes. So, we'll let that dry just a second. I'm going to go ahead and fill these in with white, and then we'll fill them in with, uh, with the black. These are dry enough. And we'll do the outlining in black. I've learned that it's easier just to go ahead and fill this in all the way with white rather than do your black and then try to fill in the little bitty spaces around the black. This is much easier. And that's another little thing that I'm sitting here one day and I thought, why am I trying to get, when I did it the other way, I would do the uh, draw the black pupil, paint that, and then try to be very careful getting the whites around that. And why have I been doing that for so long this way? It's easier just to go ahead and paint it all black, I mean all white, and then put the black pupil in. And then we'll outline it. Okay, and while that's drying, I'm going to need another little coat right here. I'll let that dry. We may have to put another little coat here in just a minute. Let's go ahead and give him some bushy, bushy eyebrows. And we're just going to flick just like we did with the beard. Kind of pounce in. Okay, with this one, I'm just going to pounce with the eyebrows. I think that looks a little better. And I'm just using a small round. Again, letting some of that um, gray show through. See for the ring light. Okay, 
Okay, now we want You know what? Instead of black eyes, let's do some pretty, pretty blue eyes. This is Anita's Blue Fog. It's a really pretty eye color. There's Blue Fog and then there's Heavy Blue Fog that's a little bit darker. Just takes a tiny, tiny bit. Let's see if we can do it with the um, brush that I was using. It's a little bit larger than what I would normally do them with. Let's see if we can get away with it by just putting it on the tip. And let me see if we do the iris or the pupil. is also a very pretty sky color <coughs> to use. Okay, ladies, I'm so, so proud of myself tonight because I have not had to use the cough drop, but you can tell that my voice is starting to get a little raspy, and I haven't even taken a drink of water, and we're about to get through it. Let me dry that and we'll put another coat on it. to get a smaller brush to do the outlining. And the little eyelashes. drop something down there. No telling what. When I get through, I'll look down on the floor and there's no telling what I'll find on there. So I'm switching to a smaller uh, liner brush to line with black. And I think I can get away with just doing it from the lid. No more than we're going to need. We're going to do his cheekbones. I can see that I am going to need another coat of that blue. Okay, 
And then let's go around the eyes. So I'm getting just a little tad out of that lid and then really pulling my brush out to get a good point, rounding it as I go to get a good, um, good point on it. Okay, and then this is so little that instead of doing the star, like the snowflake that I typically do in there, we're just going to do a couple of dots. With the little daughter. So we'll do one up here. And down here. Okay, let's do some eyelashes on him. Put that nose on and we're done. The brush is trying to separate on me. Oh, and look what I found. The one that I was looking for in my paint jar, I mean my paint cup. Okay, let me get the other one. Same size. The bristles are just better on it. The other one needs to be boiled and cleaned. Just putting it on the very, very tip because these are so tiny. Need a little more water. A little more paint. Okay, and then we'll flick these out this way to the left kind of like his beard and let's put just a tad bit of that pink just with the liner brush that we did with his cheeks. Just kind of put a little bit under those cheeks. Okay, so with the stick fast glue, and that's what it's called is stick fast, we're gonna put his nose on. We'll get back on the black before I smear it everywhere. Okay, so I wanna make sure that the pink is at the top. A little spot right here. And then I'm going to put just a little bit on the nose itself. Trying not to get it on my fingers. It is not fun trying to get it off your fingers. 
have to be careful because once you put it on there, it sticks like that. It's done. I cannot move it. And I wanted to scoot it over just a little bit more, but I'll just have to paint just a little bit there. I mean, it sticks fast. <laughs> it holds up to its name. Okay, so let me get a little bit of the white over here and just kind of put that mustache right up to it. And you'll never know it. I am going to put a little more pink. around this side of his nose because it got on there a little bit crooked. I'm just going to rub it on with this little liner brush just to kind of even it out a little bit. Okay, I think we are done. I know it's backwards for you. We could make him a little um, curly Q hair coming up here. We might just drip some water. Let's make him one little curly Q. Brush go there. We go. So I'm just putting white just on the tip of it, and we will make him one little curly cue. There we go. Okay, I think he's sweet. So two and a half hours. <laughs> but y'all know me. That's just the way I roll. <laughs> okay, so here he is this way. Let's see if we can get that light turned down so you can see the beard. I've got him facing down a little bit. So practice on the beard. Once you you practice it a few times, get the hang of it. It is really not that hard. Just put your gray down first. Hi, Jane. Uh, let's see. Tracy, I was late getting on and saw you, so I must come back and watch the whole... Yes, watch the whole thing, because I did give you a challenge at the beginning, and I showed you a few other things that I've been working on, but that's this. And again, if you're not doing it live, if I'm not doing it live, I can knock this out. I can knock about a dozen of them out in a couple of hours. So, um, you could even put some, splatter some black, splatter some red. Um, there's just so many different things that you can do with him. But that is our Santa for tonight. That's the one we did tonight. A little brighter red and brighter green. This is a more, um, and that light is bright, sorry. This one is, the original is more of a, burgundy and a much darker green um but basically the, the same thing so the red is you know is very pretty that burgundy is really pretty but my house is done in the bright reds and and green so i will probably end up keeping this one for myself it would be cute i've got to put a hanger on it uh probably put some jute string or maybe some ribbon i'm not sure yet or it would be really cute sitting in an easel um, or depending on your tear tray, how large it is, this one may be too big for that, but it would sit on a shelf easily. Um, the one that I did, the size, um, oh, I think I threw it over there. The other size that I did, the very small one, um, would be a great tear, tear shelf. But that is it for tonight, ladies. Thank you so much for hopping on 
and uh, I hope I don't have to go that long again without being on here. Uh, the pneumonia is pretty much cleared up now. Uh, just have some lingering uh, coughing, but I didn't cough on here at all tonight, so that that's huge because uh, up until just a couple of days ago, if I even tried to talk, the coughing was just horrible. So it is, I just couldn't wait another day to be on with you guys. You have just been wonderful to me and for me, and I will definitely be on here again before Christmas, uh, probably in the next couple of days or so, just trying to catch up on some things. Um, but if I don't talk to you or if you're not able to get on here between now and then, have a wonderful, wonderful Merry Christmas. Doesn't look like we're going to get any snow here. It's going to be 80 Friday and then 50 Saturday. It was 30 something today in Texas. You just, you never know what it's going to do. But for those of you that are going to get some snow, try to send some towards us a little bit. <laughs> we'll take it just for the holidays anyway. Um, thank you, Tracy. I am feeling so much better. Thank you, Lynn. I think it's just a, a sweet little fast. Um, it would make a cute uh, co-worker gift or... Um, I don't know, just, uh, just something for your house, but, um, thank you so much, but you guys have a wonderful, wonderful holiday season. Don't forget to call your family. Uh, if you can't get together, you know, at least now we've got FaceTime and everything. Try to be with them as, as best you can. Um, you know, if you can't be with your family, find a friend, find a friend to be with, um, I'm sure we'll, there'll be somebody live <laughs> Christmas because sometimes we don't get to be with it. Like, we don't have our Christmas on Christmas. We have it the week before Christmas. So, I may be on here Christmas. I don't know if we're at home. But, again, thank you for hanging in with me. It was a little long tonight, but I enjoyed just watching your comments and just knowing that you're on the other side of this uh, really makes my day. I've got a lot of changes that I'm trying to work out as far as things I'm going to do next year, uh, like the in-home uh, sales parties, like um, we used to do with uh, Tupperware, Pampered Chef, I think they still have those, 31, whatever all those are, uh, Mary Kay, but just uh, set up a little pop-up craft show in your home and have a come-and-go party or a come and sit and have snacks party and uh, try to get some things for spring and things like that done. So I've got some ideas that I'm working on, uh, but some um, not sure if I'm going to do the Etsy shop or not. I've been debating on that. Y'all know how I am technically. So we'll see. I'm not sure what I'm going to do there, but I'm trying to do something that, um, that I can benefit you as far as getting some of these items. Um, I have been selling my templates like crazy. They're just hand-drawn templates. I don't have a lot on there. I hope to put more on there. But thank you so much for buying my little hand-drawn uh, templates. I've been seeing a lot of them painted uh, on your pages and it just just warms my heart. I just love that somebody's having fun with them. Um, it is a neat idea. You know, we just, with COVID and everything, I've just missed being with people and I just love being with people. And so I've done that, um, oh, years and years and years ago, probably 25, 26 years ago, we did that. I had a, a lady that was crafting with me and we would just have in-home parties and they would last just a couple of hours. The hostess was able to uh, get points going towards something free. And, um, you know, so it was kind of like uh, not not a paint party. You take your, your finished items and set up a little a little display and uh, sell that way and get to meet new people and hand them forms and go, hey, if you want to do this or if you want to have a paint party, here's how you do it. So anyway, I'm hoping that will go over well. But I'm going to let you go tonight. I'm going to go eat my supper. And I'm um, not sure what I'm going to fix yet, but uh, it's kind of late, so it's probably something quick. But thank you again for being on here. Please don't forget to spread the video, spread the paint, spread the love, however you want to put it. I appreciate it. My algorithms went down over the last month because I haven't been on here. So I got to get them back up. So thank you. I appreciate each and every one of you. You have a great rest of the week. Bye-bye.